Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to show you how to store tomatoes all winter long on the shelf without refrigeration, without uh, canning or any of that complicated stuff, okay? So I'm gonna say a few words about it and then I'll take you into the kitchen and show you exactly how to make this stuff. Now, why would I want to make this? Because preserving the harvest is the other part, the other half of growing it. So preserving it is very important and especially it's always best without refrigeration or other technical means if you can. So let's say that you have been following all the techniques on this channel and so you've got very healthy thriving tomato plants and even though it's the end of the season <clears throat> towards the end uh, your plants are still producing tomatoes like crazy. Well, that's great. You've already made uh, a pasta sauce. You've already eaten so many tomatoes, but now what do you do with the rest? Do not let them go to waste. I will show you the technique for this. Now, when would I use this thing that we're about to make in the video? Uh, all winter long. Anytime that you need that zing from the tomato, that, that intense flavor, anywhere that you would use tomato paste, any recipe that calls for that, uh, any recipe that calls for, that just needs that, that extra tang. And it's amazing how flavorful this stuff is. I mean, one teaspoon of it is just boom, exploding with flavor, especially if you've got a tomato that you really like, a certain type. It concentrates all the flavor. It's so delicious. Now, uh, we in the first part of the recipe, you will see we are using a dehydrator, but don't let that scare you. If you don't have one, I'll explain to you a technique that you can utilize without a dehydrator. Uh, but I will show you uh, the one that I'm using and, and then we'll come back and I'll explain a little bit about it. So let's get into it. First thing you wanna do is go outside and pick some of the nice ripe tomatoes. Make sure you're not letting this stuff go to waste. So pick the ones that are ripe, even overripe is still okay. And then we want to, if they're cherry tomatoes, you just cut them in half. And no need to cut them any further. So you cut them in half with the cut side facing up. And that's gonna be very important to capture the flavor that we want. Now, if you're using bigger tomatoes, you just slice it like this into about quarter inch strips. And then it doesn't matter which way you put them. Okay, now at this point, once they are cut and uh, cut side up, you can either place them on the dehydrator like I'm gonna show you, and, and I'll say a couple words about the dehydrator that, that I have, uh, or you can put them in the oven on a baking sheet and set the oven at 250 Fahrenheit for about four hours. But either way, you're going to want to make sure that they are crispy, that they are crispy. By the time they're done being dehydrated, they have to be crispy. They can't be bendy, okay? So that's the only gauge, whether you use a dehydrator or the sun, if you live in Iraq or someplace, the right type of place. Uh, wherever it is, you just have to have them so that they're crispy. And then we'll continue on. Okay, now we are going to place them onto the dehydrator, being certain that we're not crowding them in too tight because we want plenty of airflow to get around these to dry them properly. And personally, I like to add a few basil leaves. This is only on the top shelf. I'll add just a couple of the basil leaves. Now here, I'm gonna be using my Nesco dehydrator. Now this is the most economical of all the dehydrators that I've had. It's a really good one. It's only like $80 and it's worked good for a number of years for me. Um, although I do have another dehydrator that I actually prefer, which I'll show you in a different video, but this is the most economical. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check it out, but uh, we're going to let it go for about 24, 36 hours until it is crispy dry. It's got to be dry like leaves in the fall. Now, here we are about 36 hours later, and these little tomatoes now are bone dry. They're like uh, leaves in the autumn. If you squeeze them, they will crumble. That's how dry the stuff has to be in order for it to keep for years. Now, we're gonna put all of it, including the basil if you used any or whatever else, uh, we're gonna put it into the blender. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of blender you have. I have a Vitamixer, so it gets it really powdered but I like to make sure that it's nice and powdered because that gives you more versatility in using it. Because if you leave it sort of chunky, you, the chunks might not rehydrate. It actually takes quite a while for them to rehydrate. So uh, we're gonna powder this so that it looks like this. So it's just crumbly. Um, when you move it around, it's not clumping together. If it clumps real bad, that's a sign that you did not dehydrate it enough if it clumps real bad. So you'll have to dehydrate it more. But you see this just flows freely like that right into the can. And that is what we want. This stuff is nice and dry. Gonna last a long time. Here we go. I've put it into an airtight container. It's very important to store it in an airtight container. 
because it will want to suck the moisture out of the air. So it's in an airtight container here with its brothers and sisters of the whole smorgasbord of homemade spices and herbs and everything I use. Okay, my friends, so there you go. Now you've got shelf-stable tomato uh, tomatoes. But if you need it to be like tomato paste, then just take like a tablespoon or however much and rehydrate it gradually with a few drops of water till it gets the consistency that you want. Uh, you can make like a type of ketchup with this or if your soup or your stew something needs a tomato zing you can add this it is just very versatile very delicious and especially you can get creative with it so I've got a number of different ones of these and uh, I've got one that has uh, tomatoes and basil and oregano and garlic and onions I dehydrated all of that together and then blended it up and that's like a a uh, pasta sauce dehydrated pasta sauce basically for whatever you need it to be so this is how we preserve the harvest without refrigeration uh, add it to your repertoire of cooking and all that kind of stuff okay let me know if you have any questions and let me know if you're interested in seeing the other way I, I store tomatoes and that's by fermentation and that's a whole different ball game that is so zingy like a marinara very delicious so let me know if you want to see that and um, thank you.